Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Now, um, uh, one last question. I don't know too much about HTML5 as in other than YouTube's beta launch, but how do you see it in perspective to H uh, YouTube's official coding? Okay, so you're talking specifically about uh, video playback yeah, on like the web? Yeah, making okay. it their default. Okay, so HTML5 is a specification that, to my knowledge, has not really been made official by any committees. Uh, in fact, it's been said that Adobe is actually holding back the ratification, uh, largely because of the, the video element and some richer features that one might find in HTML5 uh, that would basically replace some things that you would currently only be able to find inside of proprietary flat platforms like uh, uh, Adobe's uh, Flash. Um, inevitably, I believe video playback will be handled now in HTML5 because it can't. Number one, it can happen in HTML5. Number two, we don't need anything terribly complex with video with video playback. I can play. Uh, tell you the truth. Do you think HTML5 will like dominate Flash though? No, it won't dominate Flash. That's 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 not accurate. Flash does a lot more than just video playback. Uh, but I can tell you that ninety percent of the problems that I have inside my web browser are not related to the browser, but related to Flash, uh, and largely in video playback. I can play back a video in HTML5 with a supported browser, and my CPU takes up far less cycles. I take up far less resources playing the same video. So, you know, HTML5 can handle some things better. And I, I don't even want to get, go into the encoding and the, the decoding of video. It's just raw playback. Uh, Flash has, has, you know, done what it's, it's done. It's been great. It's, it's, it's seen its time, though. Um, HTML5, in terms of video playback, I do believe will replace Flash within the next five years. Is it going to happen overnight? No, not, not any sooner than that. Uh, I mean, HTML5 playback happens on the iPad or the iPhone uh, you know, right now. Right. Flash doesn't need to exist. It doesn't need to exist in the browser. Uh, Microsoft has is, is thrown in support for HTML5. Uh, you got Firefox, WebKit, which of course Safari is based on. Pretty much every uh, browser out there is going to support it in one way, shape, or form. And so, uh, you know, the reliance or the need to rely on Flash anymore for video playback, minimal. If YouTube switches to HTML5 outright, um, you're going to hear a lot of people complain, certainly. I don't think they'd do it to, you know, until they knew that most of their audience could handle video playback with HTML5 or through some kind of plugin to make it yeah, work. Yeah, because they have to switch. If they right. start using IE... Right. Well, Apparently, but they've they would have to switch. They've already kind of turned away support for IE6. So what's to say they wouldn't turn away support and say you need to use Google Chrome or Safari or uh, Firefox in order to watch YouTube? You know what? People would do it. Yeah, they do it. Would. Because, because, that's because YouTube has so much demand, though. But with demand, they can control. Yeah. And if YouTube's already testing an HTML5 player, trust me. The writing's on the wall. The mm. writing is on the wall. Yeah. It's inevitable. It's true. You can, you know, you um, can play my live video feed on the iPad or the iPod Touch or the iPhone right now with HTML5. Can't do it with Flash. And it looks better in HTML5. Uh, looking well, at the raw source. Thing. Like anytime I enable HTML5 beta, I can never rank up in high quality. It's always 360p. It, they're beta testing. You know, oh, it's, yeah. it's to be expected. Not perfect. Yeah. That's a, less a shortcoming in the uh, of, of YouTube, and it could be more of a shortcoming in the the browser support for uh, the video tag in HTML5 in general. Like I said, it's it's not final. Uh, there, there's really no set of, of specs that one might adhere to to know that everybody else, in terms of browsers, was going to support the same stuff. I know I said that was the last question, but I have one more. As an iTunes CPU usage, do you think in the next update or like iTunes 10 that might go down? Because everybody's switching to VLC and it's getting real annoying. Because okay. I personally don't like VLC. For what? Playback? Yeah. They had everything. I mean, it takes like on my computer with uh, 2.5 gigs of RAM and uh, 
until do a core cool process. It takes about like I don't know twenty seconds for iTunes to open. And, you know, in another 10 seconds for everything to get configured, and, you know, it's just like, come on already. You know, I'm not a fan of iTunes. Uh, I, I've long believed it needed to be uh, rewritten. Hell, I was saying that back in iTunes version 7. Uh, it will, you know, eventually evolve. Will it become less resource-hungry? I don't know. It depends on how uh, Apple, you know, codes the next version of it. You know, whether it will be optimized for the platforms and technologies that Apple's been, you know, championing. Um but the only thing is, is that I always have to open iTunes anytime I want to do something to my iPhone. And, you right. know, it's just like for that kind of support, I want that to go faster. I, you know, I'm not in disagreement. Um, you know, Apple's not likely to abandon iTunes. I would like to, however, see some massive, massive changes in the next version. I think we all would. I, I don't think you can find an iTunes fan on the planet who wouldn't say that, you know, it's, it's got its problems. It's worked well to this point, but, yeah, that's got to change. Um, you know, one thing that might speed it up is, uh, it's, it's kind of a sad workaround, but, uh, I find that it works dramatically faster when, uh, I'm running it on a system that has an SSD versus having, uh, uh running off the hard drive. Yeah. Okay. It, it seems to be more disk intensive, uh, than it, it seems to be, you know, CPU. Not to say that it, it doesn't take CPU or memory. But uh, I think that the faster disk you have, I think that the, the faster it seems that, well, everything runs, but iTunes specifically, because it's, it's managing a library of files. So these files are sitting on your drive, and the faster your drive is, well, the, the more responsive iTunes and systems like that are going to be. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for answering all my questions.